science and the future, two terms that often go hand in hand. One may not think of Africa as a place where scientific and technological revolutions are born. But Dr. Sibusisu Sibisi, President and CEO of the CSIR, can provide you with a litany of proudly African innovations. An example, um, there's a, a, um, an esoteric area on the face of it, of, of uh, activity called fluid uh, dynamics, which is about modeling the way that, um, for example, um, air might flow around um, an object. Um, now, you can up use that in the context of modeling the flight of, uh, for example, uh, an aircraft through the atmosphere. Or you might use that to model how a, a draft, how the wind might flow in, um, in a room uh, as part of the design, better design of buildings. Now, in the context of uh, one of the applications that we are working on, uh, we are involved in um, the better design of um, hospitals in, in um, uh, where people have TB, TB hospitals, particularly where there is a challenge of what is referred to as um, drug-resistant TB. You want to minimize the flow of air in such a manner that uh, uh, it, it facilitates patient-to-patient -patient, uh, transmission of, um, of, of, of TB, of uh, drug-resistant TB within the hospital. I information and communication technologies is an underpinning uh, area of activity that touches, that's ubiquitous really, it touches almost everything that we do. We do work on, on uh, better understanding of uh, the natural environment, not just in a static sense, but uh, dynamically, the, the various ecosystems, how, how um, does the atmosphere relate to water resources, relate to the oceans, relate to, and, uh, and how is all of that um, better understood by having a better grasp of climate change. We um, are involved in, um, in some instances, um, uh, large facilities such as our satellite application centre, which again, satellites may well be advanced technology, but when you turn them to the use of studying the earth, studying the atmosphere and studying the ground, you can then use that as a planning tool for agriculture for monitoring um, the spread of fires, for example, so that you can intervene early in the event that you need to do so in the, in the event of, uh, as part of disaster management. The, the spread of floods, um, there's a, a big problem in our neighboring area, for example, in Mozambique. So one could wax lyrical on a whole variety of, of um, areas of activity that um, have a direct impact on, on our livelihoods. Jason de Villiers is an electronic engineer and researcher He's committed himself to the CSIR's Defence, Peace, Safety and Security Department. Approached by the South African Navy, de Villiers was tasked to develop 360-degree panoramic eyes to increase their surveillance aptitude. Recently, in the past few years, there's been a phenomenon called asymmetric warfare, whereby for comparatively little damage, uh, people pretending to be civilians can row up towards a Navy vessel and then do a large amount of damage. Uh, the last example of this was in 2000 where the USS Cole was damaged uh, when it was in harbour in Yemen. Motivated by this disaster, de Villiers and his team began developing the Omnidirectional Maritime Surveillance System in 2008. They completed the prototype earlier this year. A human can see approximately 170 degrees, and, but can only get detail in about 2 degrees. The rest of your entire field of view is made up of your eyes slowly moving and you're generating the image. But, but the camera is getting detail on the full 360 degrees simultaneously. We use multiple cameras uh, which we've then calibrated and we can then take their, their outputs and in real time create a panoramic stitch behind us. This, this stitch is approximately um, double high definition resolution, about 4000 by 1000 pixels. The, the camera data streaming in here uh, is enough to fill a CD approximately every four and a half seconds. So we've developed algorithms in conjunction with several South African universities that we work with to take this data, to stitch it into one seamless image behind me in real time. And then we can also model the background and we can highlight parts of the image that are moving so that one person then is able to perform the surveillance for the entire ship instead of having multiple people. So here, only the parts of the image, as you can see over there, in the corner that are moving, are being highlighted. The rest of the image is all black. So th this is the information that, that we use 
um, in order to determine which things, which parts of the scene are important and should be highlighted to the crew member that's paying attention to this. And this allows us to uh, increase the, the safety of the crewmen on the ships, which helps foster an environment of uh, safety and prosperity to allow our economy to grow. De Villiers is currently busy with his PhD, which is being funded by the CSIR. The CEO endeavours to continue the organisation's support to budding scientists in South Africa. We spend a good proportion of our income, for example, of our resources. Um, supporting uh, someone who has a first degree to get a master's, or someone who has a master's to pursue a PhD if they so desire, and, or to pursue training in particular areas of uh, activity that may are complementary to the scientific endeavor, such as um, appropriate areas of management, for example. It is absolutely essential that we do this and continue to do this in order for, to remain strong. The successes of the CSIR have attracted a wealth of attention to the African continent. In the last year, the organization has exceeded targets for total turnover, net margin, and the value of contract research and development. 30 new international national patents were granted, and 38 inventions were disclosed. Watch the space for more exciting developments from the CSIR in the future. Thank you.